The evolutionary tree of sharks shows how they have diversified through time, from the bizarre looking Cloud of Salak, a prehistoric genus from the Devonian times, to the Great White of today. In red, we can see the rise and fall of shark populations through the time periods of Earth's history. Four major extinction events and how these drastically affected shark populations are also marked on the timeline. But what has made these such a successful group? For this, we'll have to go back 410 million years to when we believe the first sharks were recorded. It is difficult to truly define when the first sharks appeared due to the poor fossil record. Sharks have a cartilaginous skeleton which rarely fossilizes and so their teeth and scales are used to identify them. The first confirmed fossil can be found in the Devonian era. The extinction followed this period is presumed to be the accumulation of up to as many as seven separate events spread over about 25 million years. Overall, about 80% of living species died out in the late Devonian, with the main victims being marine species. Immense expanses of car reef were decimated. However, the sharks which perished did not look like the sharks we know today. The Cladosalac was one of these sharks. It had small scales around the mouth and eyes, but was lacking in scales on the rest of the body. Other species such as Stethacanthus, with its bizarre looking spiked iron-like dorsal fin, thrived right into the Carboniferous period, known as the Golden Age of Sharks. This Golden Age was when species such as Stethacanthus underwent a large adaptive radiation. This diversification continued until one of the greatest mass extinctions occurred 250 million years ago. The PT extinction, commonly known as the Great Dying, occurred at the end of the Permian. This saw a loss of up to 96% of all marine mammals. The cause of the PT extinction is still debated, but it's currently believed that it's caused by an enormous volcanic eruption of the Siberian traps. This eruption filled the atmosphere with carbon dioxide which was absorbed by the oceans, thus depleting the oxygen levels and causing the oceans to become warmer. With this, the oceans also became highly acidic. A survivor of the PT extinction event was the order Xenocanthida, which lived from the lower Carboniferous through to the Triassic. There are freshwater sharks with fins that reach down their backs, ending at the base of their tail. We see significant morphological difference than that of the famous triangle fin of the modern sharks. These xenocants possessed a spike, which protruded from the base of the skull. It's believed that this spike was used against larger predators, such as giant marine reptiles like ichthyosaur, as a defensive weapon. Another shark who lived throughout the Permian-Triassic period, and by far the most successful, was the genus Hybidus, an extinct genus of Chondrichthyon, a class that consists of all cartilaginous fish. They have a cartilaginous skeleton instead of bone, are jawed vertebrates and have paired fins. The late Triassic mass extinction saw many phases of species loss between 240 million years to 199 million years ago. The Central Atlantic Magmatic Province is a large igneous landmass that was created during the breakup of Pangaea. It is currently believed that the degassing of these mainly basalt rocks is largely associated with climate change, which in turn led to this mass extinction. This left large expansions of ocean to be conquered by sharks. This great loss of life allowed for the subsequent development of dinosaurs and the precursor of modern sharks. Hybodons were also a dominant genus of the Jurassic period. They developed much of the modern characteristics like a protruding jaw and more efficient tail fins. They were generalist feeders with sharp teeth at the front for seizing and blunter teeth at the back for crushing and grinding. The hybodons are the closest related clad to Neosalachians which is a group containing all living sharks. They survived late into the Cretaceous period and it is likely that they became extinct through competition with modern sharks. From this, we then pass through to the age of the dinosaurs. Here, the marine terrestrial biodiversity exploded, bringing about the development of species that are still seen today, such as the deep sea goblin shark and filter feeders, such as the basking shark. These were just a few of the species to survive the bombardment of the KT extinction. The Cretaceous Tertiary Extinction, also known as the KT, occurred 66 million years ago. This is probably one of the best known mass extinctions, as almost three quarters of life on the planet was decimated, and it also marked the end of the reign of the dinosaurs. The KT devastated life in the oceans. However, one giant managed to survive this great extinction. 
at approximately 12 to 21 metres long, this colossal shark may seem unfathomable in this day and age. However, it had many behavioural and physical similarities to the great white shark, with the exception of size, as the average great white is only 4 to 6 metres long. It's believed that this was the largest ever predatory fish. The megalodon reigned the oceans from 70 to 10 million years ago, and it's still unclear as to why it became extinct. And from this we arrive here, 2018, the Holocene era. Today, there are 440 species of sharks swimming in the oceans of the world, and even more species being found each year. The hammerhead sharks from the family Serenidae are the newest shark species in the oceans. Their survivability of sharks through impossibly difficult and rapid evolutionary changes has been truly unique. In the face of adversity, they rose up as a reigning presence in our oceans, not only surviving, but thriving. With this in mind, what does the future hold for these impressive Condorteans? They may have to face their toughest challenges yet, such as anthropogenic climate change and extensive overfishing for their valuable body parts. A hundred million sharks are killed every single year due to human activity. Will humans be the reason why these ancient monsters finally perish?